Well, hello friends, Coach Bob with you today, and today we're gonna be talking about the Can-Am Freedom Trailer. The good things about it, the bad things about it, the indifferent things about it. We're gonna talk a little bit about the maintenance on it and that sort of thing. You know, I've got a lot of questions about the trailer here recently, and I know that we're getting into touring season, so the trailer is something that is used by a lot of folks. So here's the trailer right here. I was gonna take it outside, but it's awfully darn windy out there, so I think what I'm gonna do is move the spider around and pull the trailer out here where the spider is, and uh, we'll just do a little talk about on the Can-Am Freedom Trailer. Let's get this spider out of the way so we can have a little more room to work. All right, so here is the 2019 Can-Am Freedom Trailer. The 2020s are out now. There is no significant difference that I am aware of. Uh, it is the typical four pin, four pin connector on these. It is designed to work with the Can-Am Spider. This trailer has served us very, very well. So I will say before we even get going that I am somewhat of a fan of this. If you were wondering what is, what is up with all the kitchen chairs out here, the old supply chain thing, I uh, recently ordered a table and chairs. The, the table top, no legs came in. That was two months ago. And then the chairs for the new table came in yesterday and hopefully we'll have some legs for the table here in the next month or two. All right, so here's the inside of it. I'll see if I can't get a light or something to shine in here and we'll get, get to looking a little more closely. All right, so an annual procedure you're supposed to do on this thing at, at least once a year is you're supposed to check this coupler right here. All right, so the, the recommended torque setting for these is 48 foot pounds. So they recommend you doing a coupler and tongue inspection, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these off. These are 15 millimeter bolts. May regret taking this off, <laughs> as I often do when I, when I inspect things. I, I get them apart and they're much easier to take apart than they are to put together. So all I've done is I've taken this bottom coupler bolt out. I'm inspecting to look at everything to see how it all looks. It looks fine. Um, no real metal fatigue. All, all I can tell you is that there's a lot of uh, grinding and stuff that goes on <laughs> on this part of the trailer. Uh, that's where all your pressure, all your points are. So anyway, then you, what you have to do, you have to make sure everything's lined up. I've just got a little screwdriver. I'm gonna line up my uh, cables and a uh, little spacer in there, get them all lined up. And then I'll just push this right back through here. Do you have to go through and do what I'm doing here? Probably not. But is it something that I wanted to do just to double check everything? Yes, so it's all done. Now we'll get these things torqued back down. Again, they said 48 foot pounds. Am I gonna go 48? Probably not. Um, they weren't. Near, they were not near 48 foot pounds uh, when the guys that uh, installed this thing put it on here. Um, 48 foot pounds to me feels awfully dang tight, and I'm worried about honestly compressing this tube. I don't know that that is a worry point for you guys, but it's certainly a worry point for me. I'm just gonna go with my gut on this. Just doesn't take a whole lot to damage something. All right, there we go. So I went to about pounds and I'm just gonna go with that because I'm uncomfortable putting any more torque on that even though I'm using a torque wrench. I'm just gonna, gonna go with that. You can do what you want on that. Like I said, the uh, coupler, it says, the coupler bolts, if the bolts are loose, check the coupler and the tongue for damage. Retighten bolts to specified torque, 48 foot-pounds. Check your tire pressure, I do that. I don't think you need to see that tire inspection. You don't need to do that wheel inspection. One thing they do talk about doing every year is your wheel bearings. Um, install a jack under the frame, blah, 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 blah. Push and pull the wheel. I've already done that, but I'll show you what that looks like. And you can see how light the trailer is, how easy it sways. That's why they want you to get it off the ground, but I can grab it left to right, front to back, and it's not moving. Again, I just grab it like this and jostle it. 
Lugs are at 77 foot-pounds. Now the most difficult part of a trailer is the fact that everything is so light. When you go to torque anything, the trailer wants to move. There we go. So we've got the coupler where we want it. We've got the lug nuts done. We've checked the wheel bearings. Everything is looking good. Another thing to expect the inspect is this wire right here. This is your ground wire. It's not corroded. Everything looks good and clean. Looking up in there, you can see all the way through to the front of the trailer. Everything looks good. The thing you should just do is just inspect everything. Just look through everything. Make sure everything looks good. If for any damages, cracks. All right. So there's your annual maintenance. That's all there is to it. There's really not much to it. So now let's do a long-term review and give you the good, the bad, and the ugly on the Freedom Trailer. All right, as you might have noticed, I bleeped out the uh, foot pounds that I torqued my uh, coupler bolts to. That's because I want you to do what the manufacturer says, not what Coach Bob says. They have a reason for doing it their way. I have a reason for doing it my way. And uh, always go with the manufacturer. If you, anything else you do other than that, you're, all, you're on your own on that one. So, But inspect your trailer. You can never go wrong. Inspect, inspect, inspect. Look, 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 look for trouble. Always look for trouble, hoping that you don't find it. But if you do, at least you can address it while you're not on the road. So let's start talking about the trailer now. The good, the bad, the ugly. Let me get these tools out of the way here. The last thing I need to do is trip, which I probably will do 15 times anyway, because ah, that's what I do. So let's start out with the inside of the trailer and do a little look-see here. Now, as you can see, our trailer is weathered. We use this thing. You can see the scuff marks on the front. Um, we use it, we pack it up very, very tight all the way to the very, very front there. Then you can see right here, damage here. This is where Coach Vic's wheelchair goes in. Um, this is your label, your little sticky label, has all of your tire sizes and all that. The back you can see all scuffed up. Now, so as you can see, as far as durability, I would say the trailer is quite durable. Um, does it hold up well to being banged around? I'd say that no paint would really hold up very well to having metal jammed into it all of the time. So I would say, um, as far as durability on the finish on the interior, I would say that it's more than adequate. You can see right here, this is where Coach Vic's wheels, you can see that curve right there, that's where Coach Vic's wheels have hit. Now this right here, this is, I, I'm looking at that, I'm assuming that this is where this was in a mold and that's the little, you have a, a, a place where you blow uh, the fiberglass out of the mold and I would venture to say with that, that that's what that is. And I'm gonna tell you that right there, that's crap. That's terrible fit and finish right there. Uh, there's just no other way of putting it. There's just no other way of putting it. You can say it's good if you want to. I will just have to disagree with you. Um, this right here, this sort of thing, uh, just, it works. It does work, but is it neat and tidy the way I would have done it if I were building it from the factory? I'd say uh, it could look a lot better on that. Right here where these support brackets and your hinge brackets go into the body, I've had several people send me pictures of theirs going, hey man, does this look right? Theirs looks just like mine. So they had the same kind of idea that, you know, hey, is this right? Is this going to come loose? They weren't happy with the way that looked. Um, I've seen good, I've seen, I've seen somewhere they had a tab way out here where they had mounted this in the wrong place and they didn't cut it off and redo it. They just, they just, they just added onto it and then mounted the hinge on there. So is that going to be beautiful all the time? Is the fiberglass work going to be exactly what you want? No, I'm going to say no, but it is what it is. These are your hinges right here. These things are supposed to be self-adjusting. They've got the little compression uh, tube and all that. Do they adjust on their own? They do. Are they 100%? Well, that's going to be part of the bad and the ugly. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, though. Uh, I was asked recently also, I made this flooring material here. I took a carpet and then I took a foam mat, a three-quarter inch mat, and put this carpet on top of it. It has served us very, very well. Uh, BRP makes a little insert, floor insert that drops in now. It really is nice. Um, we thought about going with that, but as long as this meets our, our needs, we're just going to keep this for what it is. So the interior of the trailer, functionality, 
absolutely 100%. Uh, the trailer works very, very well. Um, it's stable, uh, it, you know, the way you pack it and all that stuff. It's easy to pack. Oh, one more thing I wanted to point out. You can see right in here, this is a styrofoam material. You can see how it flexes. It's pretty soft. If you jam things in there, you're gonna damage this stuff. Uh, I've, it's, it's been pretty durable, more durable than I thought it was going to be. Um, because I do jam things up in there, I really, really do. Um, also understand the uh, weight, the weight that you can carry, this thing is stressed to carry 200 pounds. It's supposed to be distributed at 55% uh, from the front and 45% to the back. They recommend carrying the weight down low, that sort of stuff, common sense things. You don't want a bunch of weight on the back and then the tongue is not, doesn't have any pressure on the tongue and it's, it's you can, and you don't want it all on the front either. So just use common sense and good judgment, I think will carry you a long way on that, but but go with what what BRP says on it. So another good is, is the, the trailer aesthetically does look good. It's sleek, it's low. Um, it, it also does very well in inclement conditions where it is very, very windy and brutal, brutal wind. I've seen this thing. Uh, we, we've had some severe crosswinds coming through Oklahoma where it was just crazy blowing us all over the road and I didn't even know the trailer was there. So the trailer, as far as the ability to carry it in inclement weather, the wind, the rain and all that stuff, we've had no real problems with it. Does it hydroplane? I can't say that I've experienced it hydroplaning. Uh, if it was hydroplaning, I was already up on the water from the spider, so it didn't make a real difference to me, not, not as far as that went. The next ugly thing, this is an ugly thing, and I've seen this on a couple of them. This is protection for the paint. So if water gets down in here, that water does not go inside the trailer or anything like that. However, if you look at the center line right here, you see the center line? That's a quarter of an inch over that way. So this was not even put on centered from the factory. And you can see, you know, it lines up here, put it on there, it wasn't straight and they just kind of crammed this side in. So really, really poor that this should have never gotten through QA. Um, it was put on kind of cocked a little bit too. You can see your gap here. See, that's, that's a quarter of an inch versus your gap here, which is not a 16th of an inch. And what that has done, because this is cocked down and this is cocked up and that's not in the center, this sits nice and tight. And then there's a small gap here where they bowed it out to try to get it to line up. This sits nice and tight all the way down. But when you get here where they jammed it on there, you can see this huge gap. I can almost put my, I can, I can stick the end of my finger in that gap. So that's pretty poor. Um, it was that way from the day I bought it. It wasn't a deal breaker for me. It was the only trailer within 200 miles. So I picked it up. As far as the tongue and everything, this, all the coupling and all that, I really like the functionality of the steel cables. I think it works very well. It's not clanky, doesn't make a lot of noise. The pin is solid, it stays on. The reflectors work great, obviously. Uh, nice touch is the little rubber stopper there where when you set the trailer on the ground, it doesn't go clunk on your, on your frame, on your tongue there. The wheels are solid, the finish of the wheels looks great. The lights are nice and bright. Everything on the trailer, as far as that goes, the fit and finish on the lights look really good. The fiberglass work, I've, I've talked about that. I don't think it's that great. Uh, certainly all of your grinding edges. A lot of these edges just look like they were just kind of sloppily hand ground, um, but that's the way that goes. One thing that I found has been an issue for me, and I haven't talked to anyone else that's experienced or not experienced, it's just something that's never come up in conversation. These are supposed to kind of self-adjust and align up here. And if you have things packed, then it puts a little bit of pressure on the top of this. Now I'm just gonna close it. And we're gonna come up here, we're gonna look at this gap that goes across here. See, this right here, even just closing it like that, this gap over here is a little bit tighter. And you can see where it was so tight once that the gel coat actually jammed there and chipped off a couple of pieces of gel coat just from closing the lid. So, so when you close your lid, make sure you, and this is what I found work, you just kind of jostle it from side to side to make sure everything is centered, then close it and press it in, and 
you won't experience this kind of thing. But if you're not careful with it, you will. If you close it with it just kind of cocked a little bit to one side, it'll crack the gel coat on it. It will do it. So there's every flaw that I could find. There's everything that I could find that was wrong with it. And trust me, I am not beholden to anyone. I use this trailer all the time. Uh, we carry my wife's wheelchair in it, for those of you who follow the channel. By the way, if you don't follow the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click your notification bells, all that stuff. We got a lot going on always. It is really, really good. But this is a great trailer. You can't go wrong with the Can-Am Freedom trailer. It has served us well. We have traveled, we pulled this trailer probably 23,000 miles and it has served us well. Um, the tires still look in great shape. Um, there's no dry riding on them. Um, everything looks good. The trailer is ready for another season. And when I say ready for another season, uh, we don't really take seasons off here. So we are riding all of the time. But I do this inspection every six months. This, first time I've ever inspected that. Now I will tell you that I do grease and oil these m movement points in here. I do that very, very often. Uh, that's why it moves so smooth. This is a lot smoother now than when I bought it. I do keep things relatively clean. You may not, it may not appear to be, but we just went on a ride a day ago. So, you know, don't hold that against me. I've also had some folks ask about the measurements on the trailer. So I've done a video. I'll see if I can't post a link to that video, but just for a quick idea of things, let's see if I can't get a light in here and give you a couple of quick measurements and then we'll wrap this up. From edge to edge, you got 33 at the wide point. Then it steps in. When it steps in, you are 30 to the wide point. Then it steps in again. You're 26 to the widest point. It steps in again, I'm not gonna measure that. From front to back, you're just a little over four feet. Height wise at the very back, at the highest point is 20 and one half inches and it tapers down to the front. There, I'll link the video where I actually got in the trailer because we had a subscriber that had a, a family member that was in a wheelchair. They wanted to make sure the chair would fit. Coach Vic's wheelchair does fit, even her new one fits. So there you have it. The Can-Am Freedom Trailer, the good, the bad, the ugly. This should give you all of the information you need to make an informed decision as to whether you can accept the shortcomings versus functionality and costs and all of that stuff, it really does matter. For us, this tra this little trailer has, has done a wonderful job. We have been nothing but pleased with it. Uh, I will keep this trailer until it falls apart. It is wonderful. Um, I will replace the wheel bearings when the time comes. I will do the things that need to be done. Also, just to let you know, this one other thing I'm gonna mention here, the very front, you saw the shock absorber, the little spring. You can adjust the preload on this. I've never adjusted it. It is as it came from the factory. I've never messed with it, I'll be honest with you. It's just, it's just worked well out of the box. It's been just done great. So there you have it, the Can-Am Freedom Trailer. It is done great. I highly recommend it. Two thumbs up, five stars from the Coach Bob 3 channel. You can't go wrong. All right, well do me a favor until next time, go out, buy the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, because you know you need to. Take care of yourself, and remember, if you're not having fun, you are doing it wrong. I'll see you on the road real soon. Now you go seize the day.